Monica, uh, you know, one of the criticisms that is coming in for for, uh, for MNCs, and if you go to social media right now, this is what they are talking about. This is something that the mother has spoken about as well, that when it comes to MNCs, they seem to have double standards. You know, you're very mindful about the mental health and the work-life balance of employees who are working in Europe or in America. But when it comes to India, there are no boundaries. You will work 12 hours a day. Your shift will be nine hours, but you'll work 12 hours a day. You'll be expected to return calls and emails on Saturdays and Sundays. You'll be expected to take calls before your work time even begins. So there is that double standard that people are calling out as well. Sorry, was that a question for me? Yes, Sonika, that was. Okay, sorry, your, your voice was uh, getting cut. So uh, I would say that, um, see, uh, uh, double standards are not just in terms of the country where they operate, uh, whether it's India or anywhere else. I think it is much deep rooted in the culture of the organization. Um, a lot of companies today also talk about having a lot of um, healthcare and well-being initiatives. They will have employee assistance programs. And even this letter uh, that uh, was circulated in EY spoke about communication channels and forums which employees can access. The double standard that exists is that nobody feels safe enough to access these channels. The double standard is that even if I were to speak up, I fear what would be the repercussions of what would happen to me if I were to say, hey, I'm overworked, I'm overwhelmed, I'm having anxiety, I'm having to go to a counselor because of the stress and the anxiety and the panic attacks. What will the manager say? What will the leader say? Will I be considered a liability or if I were to quit this job, will any other organization take me because it would be considered that I don't have the capacity to work long hours? And it is not just an MNC culture. Even Indian promoter-led organizations have the same. The other day, I was having a conversation where a leader spoke about demand and control as being a leadership concept, which continues to exist in India, Indian promoter-led uh, promoter organizations. So I believe that, you know, as a corporate culture, uh, irrespective of whether an employee is young or tenured, irrespective of whether it is an MNC or an Indian organization, irrespective of whether it is in India or anywhere else, what are we really doing in terms of employee well-being or is it just care washing and the double standard is there? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Dr. Mehta, can I just bring you into this conversation? Many managers since a day before yesterday have been talking about one thing. They're saying, Ye overwork hai kya cheez? how do you define overwork? For some people, 12 hours is normal. Now, if employees start coming to us and saying six hours is overwork, I can't deal with it. How do we deal with a situation like this? Bhai, you have been employed, you're being paid a salary. There is a certain amount of work that you need to deliver. And if you can't cope with it, please leave. So, Shrey, I think there's no one single answer to this. Uh, first of all, let me say that I don't think this discussion mm. should be about MNCs or Indian companies or private or government. Uh, this is more about the challenge, which is both physical and mental. And while, of course, this is absolutely what, what happened is uh, horrible, uh, this is something which is a much more a broader issue. And uh, le let's talk for a minute about all of the police persons who work uh, 16 hours, 18 hours a day. Uh, this is something which happens all the time in India. Let's talk about people who are construction workers who work 12 to 14 hours a day under 50 degree temperatures. So this is equally bad. So there is a physical element and then there is an element of mental uh, stress which is there. I think all of these are things that in today's modern society we are having to deal with. Now, uh, the more important or the long-term, let's say, solution for this is really to figure out what were the triggers for this and how do we reduce those. So certainly, as normally is said, people don't leave companies because the company is bad. They leave because their manager is poor. 
And I think a lot of this comes down to interpersonal relationships between uh, the managers and the subordinates. It's a question of understanding. Yes, there are times where one has to work more than the required hours. Uh, this cannot be forced, never can be forced. Mm. But at the same time, if it's required, if it's a doctor and there's a shift of 12 or 14 hours, this happens all the time. Uh, at the same time, this is not something that can be expected to be done 365 days a year. One has to understand the signals that the body gives out. And normally in such situations, there are such triggers. So I think the solution to a lot of this is to have at the workplace proper policies which govern this. There is today a greater challenge of mental health professionals. We all know that there aren't enough of them. We know that people don't feel the need to go to them before some kind of situation here happens. And at the same time, regular things like regular health checkups, uh, health facilities within the premises, regular exercise, all of these are factors which probably would lead. So personally, I think I don't think we should treat this as a situation of any one particular company or in any one particular manager. This is a much broader issue and calls for a lot of different things to come together to make it uh, better.